Okay, I want to talk about the Yarn Package Manager tool. Now, I'm doing this because this is sort of the default now for React. If you're working with React, Yarn is a replacement for NPM. Now, create React app. It still works with NPM and Yarn. You can use either one, but Yarn is slowly becoming um, sort of a favorite to use with React and other packages as well. So this is the website, yarnpackage.com slash whatever your language is. And on here, you can search through packages. Now, what you're searching really are like the node packages, the node modules, the same packages that you've been using with NPM for years, if you've been using NPM at all. This is just an alternative way of downloading and packaging and tracking dependencies. It's very similar to NPM, so if you've done any work with NPM, it'll take you very little time, a couple of minutes, to kind of make the switch from one to the other. Now, the big difference is in how they handle the packages. Once you've downloaded them, Yarn likes to maintain a cache folder where everything that you download gets put into the cache folder. Whether you're installing something globally, you're installing it in a, a project folder, you've got everything put into this cache folder. Now the cache folder is going to make things go a little bit faster because you've got this one source of truth for everything that's been downloaded. Um, it makes it easier for Yarn to resolve dependencies. It makes it easier for it to check and see if that's if you've already downloaded something. Uh, then it can just copy from the cache folder into your project or and, and so on. All right, so I've got a folder here called Wooly and I'm going to use Yarn to start a project in here. Right now, you can see I ran the ls or ls-la. There's nothing inside that folder right now except for this ds store file, which we can ignore. That's just OS X doing its thing. So I have an empty folder, and to start, we can say Yarn in it, just like you would npm. And then I'm going to go dash y for yes, take the defaults. Boom. Done. Now I have a package.json file, if I ls, there it is. And we can cat that, and let's take a look to see what's inside. Okay, so package.json file hasn't changed. It's the same as with what you get with npm. All right, now I'm going to add something to here. Now here's where the differences start. I can say yarn add, instead of npm install, we say yarn add. If I just run yarn, that is a shortcut for yarn install, and that is going to read this file and install any dependencies. So if I were to drag in a package.json file into this folder and then run yarn install, it would read this file and install anything that's inside there. Now, I didn't have anything, so nothing was needed. Now you can see that I've run this. It created the node modules folder for me, so it's there for dependencies that are required. I don't have any. The package.json file is there. And this is the new file right here, yarn lock. Yarn lock is used by yarn to decide which version of the module has been installed. So if I've added Babel or jQuery, although I don't know why I'd add jQuery now, but if I've got these packages, I can use semantic versioning inside of my package.json file to say which version I want. Now, I'm giving it a range. I'm saying, okay, anything that is version 3.1 or higher, 3. Point something that's higher than, or that's one or higher. So we can do the semantic versioning to give a range. Yarn lock will say the actual version, and it'll give me, give me a history of what the actual versions of each of the packages are. All right, so let's add something here. We've done yarn install, which read the file and it created the empty node modules and the yarn lock file. If I take a look at it, you can say cat yarn lock. There we go, auto-generated. Do not edit the file directly, let yarn do that. There it is, That's it's just a couple of comments inside there. So I want to add something. Yarn add, and then just like npm, install, yarn add, and then I say the name of the package. Optionally, I can give a version number, just like I did with NPM. So add version, say, 6.5.3. But I'm just going to let it install the latest. 
There we go, latest stable version, 6.23. That was the version that got installed. Now, if I look inside of my package.json, we can see I have dependencies. I didn't have to say save for this to appear in here. Just saying yarn add will automatically save it in the package.json file, whatever packages I list after this. So I could install multiple ones just by listing them all. And then here's the range, but inside of the yarn.lock file, there we are. We've got for this range, this is the exact version that we've got. And here's the URL. This is where it came from and it has been resolved. So yarn also has this cool security thing where it will always check, um, do a checksum on the file that's downloaded to make sure that you're getting the right file before it actually installs it. So it needs these URLs to do that. Okay, now dependencies, if I go yarn add, we did yarn add babel like that, that was adding it as a dependency. We have, just like in NPM, there's flags that we can add. So I can say dash dash dev or the shortcut for this dash dash D will add this as a dev dependency. Now I don't want to use the same file here. Let's do this one. So yarn add jQuery as a development dependency. Okay, we'll cat package.json to see what we got. And there it is, dev dependencies, jQuery dependencies, Babel. I decide, oh, okay, I don't really need jQuery. I don't want to have that one inside there. So yarn remove jQuery. Done. Take a look inside package.json. There we are. It's been removed from the dev dependencies. Yarn install, same as npm install, or the shortcut, just yarn will read the package.json file, download it. Now, you'll see how quickly that ran. Resolving the packages was already up to date, so it didn't need to download anything. It checked in that cache folder to see if anything was there. If I want to force it, I can do that. I can say, no, I really want you to download just to make sure. Maybe I've deleted something in the folder or what have you. There we go. I forced it to fetch the packages by doing this. All right, a couple of other commands. There's the yarn cache command. With yarn cache, you want to see what's been saved in the cache. There we go. I've got Babel version 6.0, Babel 6.23, jQuery 3.3. This is kind of that commonplace. If I want to install something globally, we can say yarn global add and then list something. This version right here of Babel, that's something that I install globally already, but I could do that. There we go. So this added version 6.23 globally. So I have that now. Now, if I want to know where that cache folder is, I can say yarn cache dir, and that will tell me. This is the exact location of that folder, so I can find it. If I wanted to delete everything inside of there, which I did earlier, and that's why there was so few things, those three things inside that folder. So we can say yarn cache clean. That will actually delete everything, which I don't want to do yet. So I'll just leave that there. Um, so yarn cache deer gives you the location, yarn cache clean will wipe everything out inside of there. Yarn cache list we did to show everything, but we can also do a pattern and then I can search for a pattern using like regex. So I wanna find anything that's got gulp or babel in it. Just give me those things. I don't care about jQuery, but these are the things that I'm looking for. That's my pattern there. So these are the things that I have in my cached folder that match gulp or babel. All right, now, if you're looking for anything else, I mean, really, that's the bulk of it. There is a yarn update or upgrade, and then give a library to do that. There it is. Um, I already had the latest one, but it made sure that it updated the, um, updated to the loaded, latest version. Um, yarn remove, and then 
the package that we want. We did that with jQuery. If you want to find out a few more of the commands, there are a few others. That's the bulk. Yarn init, yarn install, yarn add, yarn global add, and then the flag for dev. There is a flag for optional as well. You could say yarn add uh, cow say and either dash dash optional or capital O for that. This installs it same way as it installs anything else. The difference is that if we look in the file here, optional dependencies here. Okay, fine. It's a dependency. You've got the semantic versioning range. If you install something as an optional dependency, what happens if it fails for some reason? It doesn't report that, hey, I failed. It just says, okay, well, I tried. It didn't work, so we're good. Uh, speaking of which, Yarn will always make a second attempt. If there is a failure to download and install a package, Yarn will go and try again to add something in there. So we've got dependencies, dev dependencies, and optional dependencies which are ones that just won't report that they failed. And back to the website. So if you want to search for packages, just like on npm.org, uh, search for the package name, you get a list of matches. The documentation, if you go to the docs, the CLI commands, this is probably the best place to go. If you come into the CLI commands, here's a list of all the possible commands that you can use with yarn. All right, so I hope that helps you out. You can see how close this is to NPM. It just, the way it runs internally is a little bit more efficient, um, takes up a little bit less space the way it manages the packages and the versions so that it doesn't have to download things as, as frequently. Um, hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did, please share it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments down below. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching.